ギガバイト BGLM coming with my buddies J4Y and Mont for you game number one of the Rising Star qualifiers leading into the GEST. This is Gizmo versus Explicit. Already we have some uh, some bands coming out so far. Naga Siren, Darkseer, and still one more left for Gizmo. And then we have Templar Assassin, Invoker, and Rubik banned out by Explicit. Yeah, it looks like Explicit is just going the path of banning every mid hero possible. So, uh, we'll see how it works for them. But, uh, yeah, Lycan throws the last band from Gizmo, and they actually get an extra, an extra profit up on Explicit. Uh, looks like this could be interesting. Yeah, I think this is going to maybe leave room now for a Tinker to come in and uh, kind of match up that mobility we see uh, happen quite often. You know, and actually, in past games where we've casted Nature's Profit versus Tinker, Tinker usually seems to do. Uh, a little bit better, if not a lot better, just for the fact that once he gets his boot to travel, he can go around, kill waves so quickly with that March Machines, and just really surpass Nature's Profit Farm, regardless if he even goes that hand to Midas build or not. I mean, I think this could even open up the door for something like a Tiny Wisp combo that is seen every once in a while in the Asia scene. It's actually really strong against Nature's Profit. You just TPM, blow him up really quick in whatever lane he's in, and then you get to come back to whatever lane you're trying to defend or just back to safety. So um, another combo that could be very good for picking up against the Profit. Tidehunter is actually going to be grabbed by Gizmo, and I mean, since the International and, and the games leading up into that, Tidehunter has been so huge. Everybody relies really heavily on that Ravage, just such a huge team fight ability. And i just also like to point out that Lashrak is still in the pool. Might see that picked up as well here. I think Lashrak would actually be a great pickup for them. Uh, I definitely like the, the tight under pickup. Ravage is just such a great ability. And even without Ravage, he's got, you know, the Anchor Smash and the Gush, the two great abilities. And then there is Lashrak. Uh, great with the Edict, and obviously pushing towers in the Split Earth is a great stun, plus Lightning Storm can push lanes out. A lot of AoE damage. Uh, really one of the best pushers in the game. Sort of lost a little bit of steam uh, during International, but Morphling's the next pickup for Explicit, and that's the hard carry they're going to go with. And he's been the flavor of, I guess, like the month since the International happened, but great hero. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing I noticed so far here is, I mean, both these heroes could very easily look to go quick BKBs, and all of a sudden you don't have to worry about the Split Earth, the Ravage. I mean, uh, be a really viable pickup for both these heroes could get it very early on in the game. Yeah, you'd definitely be worried about that. Um, it, yeah, without the, the Enigma banner, uh, you know, I, I might expect to honestly see him come up here uh, to really tie in there. They need team fight at least for now explicit, looking like they've got some really powerful individual heroes uh, with some good mobility on both of them, but uh, nothing, like I said, to really tie it together yet. So if Enigma's picked up, that would be pretty amazing, but uh, maybe they'd go with something else like a Sand King, or, you know, of course there's other team fight heroes that could be thrown in the mix instead. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the one thing to point out about this explicit lineup so far is there's no CC, no dependable CC, I should say. Sprout, of course, you can hold so many of the trees, but 90 gold will get you out of that three times. Uh, just pick up those tangos and you just eat your way out. They're actually going to go with Shadow Demon, uh, a great support hero to be able to pick up there. Will probably be with that Morphling. They could even run it in the middle lane if they wanted to. Um, so I have to see what the Gizmo response is. Yeah, that's 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 really that's the dependable CC right there is that disruption, and on top of that, you can use defensive disruptions as well. And I mean, the Soul Catcher combo. I mean, you can get the disruption with Soul Catcher followed up by you know like a waveform from a Morphling. It's going to be a lot of damage early on, especially. It's just a really great support. Um, we have sort of not seen him as much lately, but I think that he could be played extremely well. Usually, though, you see him in combination with a hero that can get a, you know, an area stun off, like uh, a Leshrac or like a, you know, an Invoker. But Lone Druid will be the pickup from Gizmo. And, I mean, this has been the story of, like, the International with these two heroes facing off against each other, you know, in a carry battle. And Lone Druid's got a lot of positives, and Morphling's got a lot of positives. We'll see which one can out-carry which. I mean, just going off these first picks, I mean, who do you really sort of give the advantage to so far in this stage of the, the picks, Jay? I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. Which team would you uh, give the advantage to at this point? Well, I mean, that's pretty hard to do. Obviously, I'm looking over on Gizmo's team. Uh, they've got some nice damage output. You know, Lone Druid, I think, can definitely match up with Morphling mid to late game. 
Uh, you know, the Shrak always a strong force. Split Earth just does so much damage, and then later if he gets any kind of tanking items up on him, you know, he's able to survive long enough to dish out a whole ton of AoE damage as well. The Ravage, a great initiation. And like I said, back on Explicit, they haven't picked up that teamfight hero yet, and it's actually kind of funny to me that Gizmo bans out Tinker, because they already have Nature's Prophet, so if they grab Tinker with him, yeah, that would have been insane mobility around the map. Yeah. That's very true. Uh, Shadow Shaman now actually the ban out. So really trying to limit the amount of disable that Gizmo can still pick up. They actually have a ton of it here. And I mean, that's the other nice thing with the Lone Drew. They have the ability now to even get that entangle. So it's going to be very difficult to get away from Gizmo. I think if they find themselves in an advantageous position in a team fight, they're going to be able to clean up the entire enemy team uh, explicit just because they have so many ways of locking heroes down. Yeah, absolutely, but we'll have to see what they say they go. They're, they're still missing a few key pieces, I think, for this team, but that being said, explicit, really, they, at this point, they banned out, like, every mid-hero. If you can count Shadow Shaman as a mid-hero, they literally banned out, like, every mid-hero, so they really just wanted to make, like, they didn't want to give Gizmo too many options in that, that mid that mid lane, so we'll, we'll have to see what they decide to go for that. It's very interesting. Yeah, so who's the fifth thing to be? I was kind of predicting Enigma to get banned here, on honesty, because like I said, I think that is, I hate, I mean, I sound repetitive, like a broken record here, but if they get Enigma on this team, that's going to be some nice, nice team fight for them. I mean, of course, there is still that Sand King they could use to get that team fight. I, I know I'm only harping on these two heroes, but Storm Spirit now, so apparently we don't, or I don't know a whole lot about these teams. Uh, necessarily pick-wise, because, yeah, they're picking out two solo heroes that are really strong with mobility, um, but once again, maybe they're not so focused on having an AoE comp like we'll see in the American or uh, European teams. Which is strange to me. I mean, I, uh, they have some damage right now with the Morphling Waveform, but they really, they need more than what they have at this point. They need some sort of control or some sort of damage output that can just, you know, do a lot of damage in AoE, but at this point, they have nothing that really it really fits that description. Um, I'm, I feel like you have to go like an Enigma or something. Chem is a good pickup, though. <laughs> yeah, Chem picked up. I was actually going to say, I think um, one of the heroes that we actually saw ran a lot with Morphling in the Internationals is actually the Chaos Knight. You just had to get those uh, two heroes that are both individually pretty good carries, and you just put them together, and they can both secure a lot. Obviously, that's not going to be happening here. Disruptor picked up by Gizmo. I am very happy to see that. Got to see uh, some fantastic play uh, going back to the International coming uh, from Disruptor players. So always happy to see that. And of course, the the ultimate is going to be so huge. Should we really be able to hold the Morphling down between that and the uh, Kinetic Field? It's going to be very difficult for these heroes to get away. And I think the other interesting thing, too, I mean, Shadow Demon, really, I suppose Nature Prophet as well could really look to go for a Force Staff to sort of get around that Disruptor wall. But not too many other heroes are going to be able to go towards an item like that at this point. This is a really interesting pickup. Um, I like this pickup because uh, he's got the he's got silence for his ultimate. However, the thing is, I really the really the big thing about disruptor is that he has glimpse, and with these heroes, that might not necessarily be the best thing because Chen has a global heal. Warfling can replicate in if he gets glimpse back. Nature's Prophet can teleport in. So there's a lot of mobility when glimpse on this doesn't really matter but that being said bounty hunter is going to be the last pick up here so uh that's their that's an interesting pick i guess i i kind of really like it i mean i was kind of looking for another sort of semi carry to go with that morphling i think bounty hunter is a great way to go just give them movement speed so you can keep up with people with that track and gen just generate a whole lot of global gold i mean like i was saying if you could get like a four staff on shadow demon that's great Aghanim Scepter on Chen, amazing. Nature's Profit is always going to benefit from the items. So just being able to generate additional global gold for the team, I think, is, is fantastic through this track. Yeah, I was looking for that side lane solo, and if that's how they want to play this, I think that would be really a great way to get it. Um, Death Profit, <laughs> there, I know BDLM's happy about this pick. Going to be their fifth. Going to be that powerful late game with Lone Druid as well. So both teams really having some strong late game presence as well as mid game. I mean, these heroes all around are, I think, really strong. And I think it should be interesting to see how they work together. Disruptor, like you said, I really like Disruptor for the kinetic field plus uh, static storm. I mean, that really can screw a lot of people out of surviving when they normally be fine. You know, thinking about Morphling with Waveform, thinking about Bounty Hunter using that Shadow Walk. You know, if they get caught in that storm in the kinetic field, they could be taken down really quickly and there's not too much they could do about it. 
Yeah, I mean, I really do like the the ability for that Radiant team, though, to get out of the situations. Yeah, that Static Storm might make it very difficult, but they have a lot of outs. They have a lot of heal through Chan alone, and then they also have that disruption through the Shadow Demon, like you were talking about earlier, Malt. So they are, might be able to drag out team fights basically, through their heals, and just by being able to take people uh, out of the game through that disruption. So, a pause so far coming out by the Nature's Prophet. Gonna slow this down. We should probably uh, do our best to run over these teams here. I know, uh... This, this is gonna be interesting, I think. It is. Well, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it should apologies. <laughs> Preemptive apologies. We'll see what we can do. I'm gonna go over Gizmo, just because, you know, I got that, I got the Death Prophet, I got the Disruptor. Uh, Gleeze, tell me why W. Uh, because I can't finish reading it. It's okay. It, it happens to the best of us. Tell me why, why, why. There you go. Um, we're gonna have Sean's, Kenryo, and JXJ. Alright, back over here on the Radiant. Uh, explicit, we're gonna have Butterfat gonna be on that Morphling. Uh, Koyuchi gonna be on the Shadow Demon. We're gonna have Dinmis on, uh, the Bounty Hunter. Motherfucker Jones on the Nature's Prophet. And then 813 on Chen. And I'm Mott, sorry, that is like the only you. way you can say that guy. And name. I'm Mott, so hi, everybody. There's Mott, the third <laughs> team. To do Mott that introducing the uh, Mechanical Courier as well as the Tree Stump Courier. I like this Tree Stump Courier. It's got a lot of glowy stuff under its feet. I it looks pretty cool. Stumpy, I wish I had it. Actually. And, I uh... Yeah. I, 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 we didn't mention the, the epic combination of Nature's Prophet and Stumpy. It's a good I mean, combo. It's pretty much unstoppable. You throw that Morphling into the lane with the trees, everybody gets confused. They don't know which tree to target to kill the courier. What do I kill? I'm Probably so the one with the big treasure right chest on its back. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a little obvious, but maybe not for everyone. Um, yeah, so let's get into some what real do, well, discussion here, maybe, if we could. No. Um, it's, looking down these team fights, now I really give Gizmo the team fight leg up. I mean, Disruptor, Death Prophet, Tide Hunter. Already three amazing team fight heroes, and then add Lone Druid and Lashrak in the mix. I mean, it's just, it really, if they catch people off guard with that Ravage and followed up with a Static Storm or Connect Field, it could really be serious trouble here for uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a stat. I'm gonna give you a stat. Okay, Do it. Yeah. Um, Explicit only has two AoE abilities. One of them is Nature's Prophet Ult. Mm. The other one is Morphling Waveform. Or, uh, yeah, so. Shadow I, I don't, Poison. Alright, well. <laughs> Nobody cares about Shadow Poison, let's be honest. It does like five damage per tick, even at like its highest level. So come on. Let's let's not BS around this. Their their uh team fight ability is lacking severely. I don't care what they've got. It's just not gonna be good. I'm with in you. In comparison to a Ravage, uh Static Storm, uh, uh Split Earth, anything on the side of freaking Gizmo, except for the Lone Druid. Like, come on. It's well, ridiculous. I I do think that is something to point out. I mean, this I think explicit lineup, the way to describe it is they're very skirmishy. They're looking to try and not find all five enemy heroes together. But you look at that Gizmo lineup, and that's clearly what they're going to be doing as soon as they can. I mean, they're going to want to try and get in front of that Death Prophet, let her eat away at towers with that exorcism. That's the other thing that I really do like about this Gizmo lineup. They have Tidehunter, Lone Druid, and Lone Druid's bear just to sit in front of Death Prophet. And then, look, if anybody does jump in on the Death Prophet, just glimpse them away. It's not a big deal. They're really going to be able to defend her very well this game. You can yeah, see I mean, that's a good bear. point. This Spirit Bear wants to pull the lane, but he's getting <laughs> triple teamed over here. By explicit, they do not want him to get anywhere near that creep wave. So it's good job fending him off. What were we gonna say? He's Mom, gonna go back Drew? in. Uh, I mean, I was just gonna say. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point talking about how they're gonna want a team fight. If they ever want to play, you know, play this game out, I don't think there's any way that they can just try to pick, you know, off the team one by one because they're gonna be all five eventually. So team fights are gonna happen. There's no way they can avoid him. By the way, this lone druid bear actually did get the pull off somehow, some way. Yeah. Um, we're really sneaky of him, but he did get in. Nature's Prophet's going to be the side lane solo, actually, leaving Bounty Hunter to go mid against this Death Prophet. So kind of a little different than what I was expecting up front. I was expecting Nature's Prophet to actually take that middle role. But Bounty Hunter in the middle, if he gets that bottle and gets those high levels, he can be really a great ganking force, and maybe that's what they're going to lean on him for. You know, Nature's Prophet in that top lane, he can just easily, if he gets any kind of levels, teleport around and help set the ganks with the Bounty Hunter. So that could be pretty good to their benefit. Well, I think that's the thing, too, when you're trying to figure out which year is put in which lane. I mean, Bounty Hunter against one 
as opposed to Bounty Hunter against three. I mean, it could be very easy to take them out with some sentry wards. And as you can see, there actually is already one up there inside of the dire jungle. So they're trying to protect against the uh, invis. They're trying to protect against having wards up there. So, you know, already uh, being well prepared just in case that Bounty Hunter was to come up top. So I think this is a much better laning situation uh, for Explicit. Should just let you guys know that that bear pulled away again on the yeah, bottom lane. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it, and actually, Nature's Prophet's trying to do the same thing with his uh, his little Nature's Call, but and he did successfully get one of the waves. But it's definitely a lot easier with the Spirit Bear, who has so much health and a lot more speed to pull than those little little treant guys. So I mean, uh, yeah, already giving this lone druid at least a little bit of experience. He is level two. Nature's Prophet, on the other hand, level one, getting chased down as you can see by the Shrek. Uh, down to the middle lane, so he is going to have a rough time down here. Yeah, this is going to be a rough lane for Nature's Prophet to even try and win. I mean, with, against a tri lane, yeah, Lone Druid can do it, but Nature's Prophet, he's just, he's not, he doesn't have that tanky bear like you said, and I mean, that bear is going to be key for Lone Druid down to the bottom lane, but this Nature's Prophet can get ganked out pretty easily. I mean, there's three heroes right around him. They're getting a lane pull. They've got Crush. They've got. I mean, yeah. Look, they're already going on top of them, and now uh, Motherfucker Jones smash. actually might die. He's getting taking so much damage just from this. Yeah, disruptor might glimpse him back. He's got nowhere to go. Tries to use the south. Not gonna happen. That is first blood for disruptor already. Gizmo getting the advantage. Yeah, I mean that was the, they didn't even need the tri lane for that. I mean, Glitz just kind of came out. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna get the last hit, even though you did all the work, Henry. So whatever. But uh, yeah, Nish Prophet's gonna have a really hard time in that top lane. Yeah, I mean, we can see right now, he actually only has one creep kill. Um, meanwhile, we have uh, Morphling and the Death Prophet tied for highest right now. 16 kills each for them. And then Tide Hunter, uh, just behind that, tied with the Bounty Hunter. So, yeah, I mean, that top lane is obviously working really well. And it's actually really nice that they got some of that gold on the Disruptor, able to get his boots up. And, you know, I think when you're running as a support in a tri lane, just being able to get boots, you can just be happy about that, really, <laughs> towards the even 20, 30 minute mark of the game. Oh my gosh, I have movement speed, I can move around, yay! It's just like how you Sports feel. number one enemy is gold. So if they, if they can somehow battle that out and win, yeah, they're going to have a much better time. Obviously, both of them more just focused on pulling and making sure Tidehunter getting this free farm. Uh, definitely going to help him later on. Maybe go for a blink or a uh, pipe, depending on which route he thinks is oh, more efficient. Oh, smoke. Smoke coming mid right now. Indeed, smoke is out. With the Ursa Warrior, not exactly the creep you want. Uh, you'd much prefer a, war a troll or, you know, maybe even a centaur to get a stun out. It is a slow, though, but they're not going to find anyone with this smoke, unfortunately. So it is going to be wasted. But I like the idea coming out with an early gank. They're going to need it because Death Prophet, like you said, off to a great start. It can only go that much faster once she gets higher levels with that Crypt Swarm. Yeah, I mean, it's a little unfortunate, too, already. It looks like Explicit, they're wasting a lot of time. They might actually be able to catch somebody here. It looks like they don't know what they want to do. They're drawing out some lines. They might want to try and come around the side here. Um, try and catch out this little track who's running around. Actually going to pick up some damage from the Nature's Prophet. Look to uh, join the rest of his team. So maybe no scrimmage quite yet. But yeah, just a lot of these explicit team members running around, they haven't really gotten much for it. It's going to become a makeshift trilate, if you will. You know, you see the Shadow Demon and Chen now coming up. They actually get the disruption out. Connect Field will slow this Chen, who's taking actually a ton of damage, will go down to the Tide Hunter. So, really good turnaround after that initiation. And that's definitely going to set them much farther back. Yeah, that was just, uh, they were looking for something. They were trying to get any sort of kill they could get. They could try to catch out. But honestly, they had, like you said, the wrong creep for it. Ursa Warrior only did a little bit of damage, uh, I believe, to it was the um, Disruptor with his, uh, his Thunderclap. But other than that, there really wasn't any damage. Meanwhile, uh, the rest of Gizmo sort of turned around. There was a gush, I believe, on top of the chain. And after that, he was just really low. And he was just like, well, I'm going to die, I guess. So... I, I think the the other thing too, like just the fact that the Schismo tri is working so well. Now Tidehunter has arcane boots, so this tri lane that's just so easy, easily able to put out a ton of spell damage, now just has an infinite mana pool. And actually, we're gonna have a gank in the middle lane by the looks of it. Shadow Demon trying to come around here. The track put up on Death Prophet, but it's going to matter not. Yeah, he's just too slow. Shadow Demon could get the disrupt disruption off just because he just doesn't have boots and he can't get over the other side of the lane quick enough, but. I was waiting for this to happen. Nature's Prophet finally starting to share the jungle with Chen here. <clears throat> and you know with Chen, he likes to farm the jungle up, but you know, I'd much rather see Nature's Prophet start getting some farm than him because you know, Chen can just use those minions and he can still be a powerful force with or without items. 
So Chad Nature's Prophet, on their hand, if he doesn't get any kind of real farm, he is not going to contribute much in the mid late game. Yeah, unfortunate to see though, Chad only level three, just about half way to four. You know, like I was saying earlier, and when Lundrud was trying to to pull that lane, Chen was forced to pretty much just sit on the other side of the trees to try and defend against the bear, and wasted a lot of time, not getting any experience, uh, any gold. So this is going to mean uh, a later hand of God than he would like, but it actually looks like Lone Druid might be in trouble here. Shadow Demon trying to come around, up around for a gank, but they're not going to be able to find anything. Yeah, they're just hanging around. This is what Lashrak was trying to do before up at top with Nature's Prophet, but now, like they said, they abandoned the top completely. And you see Brown actually drawing out a line. I think he's well aware that something is happening among his ancients. So he is just going to be all the way back at the Tier 2 tower, and he's still pulling. How many pulls has this been with his lone druid? Actually, the bears could come right up if they stay put, which of course they don't. So they might not spot this bear after all. But he's been just pulling all game, doing a fantastic job getting himself the the experience and even 11 creep score, which isn't too shabby. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, you know what? Even if his bear was to get ganked, he can still recreate it. So he's, he's doing just fine for himself and at least able to get the experience. He's going to be able to hit level 5 right here. So, you know, just one more level and he's going to be uh, pretty tanky. Meanwhile, you know, that top tri-lane now, just free farm, headdress up on that tide hunter. So, yeah, like you were saying, Jamie, might be that pipe. Might look to go for the mech. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, tide hunter is going to have the, the kind of farm in this game where he might even be able to go for a blink dagger fairly early if he wants to. Oh, yeah, and it looks like it might come mid lane, but once oh, again... Oh, Profit, TPing in, it's going to use that sprout. Oh my gosh, gets line of sight oh, at the last second. Did whiff. Unfortunate there. I mean, his two teammates mid weren't really that close, so it might not have led to anything anyways, but they're really trying to get this Death Prophet down. And her CS actually has fallen a little bit now. Morphling and Bounty Hunter taking the top CS, but, and again, top lane, it's only a matter of time before that tri was going to push this against no one, and now they're working this tier two. I think uh, Explicit needs to be a little wary of this. Yeah, they can't just keep letting farm. They can't keep letting them farm at this point. I mean, they're so far ahead with Giz, with you know, with Kimrio, with Sean's here. I mean, they're going to take the sour. There's no contested here yet. They have a glyph. I don't know why they're not. There's a glyph, but it's a little late. That was like a full edict. Yeah, I mean, they have to come to defend this. I feel like. I mean. There's no way that Gizmo wouldn't be able to take down that tower in an instant. I mean, you can already see what they were able to do with one creep wave, almost completely flatline that tower. It looks like they're actually just going to try and roll middle and get a gank going there. Oh, Ravage is up. He's going to use it right now. Catch two heroes. Chen down instantly. Shadow Demon down instantly. And now they got the Death Prophet all. They're going to look to push this middle, and I don't think there's much they can do to stop him. A wonderful initiation. He's just probably coming in, trying to pick off the Tide Harbor, gets glimpsed, and now he's on the back burner. He's going to get picked off as well. This is going horribly for Explicit. Now they might get a mid tower with all these kills. Yeah, that was some great plays right there. Obviously, realizing that they don't, we don't have to get the tier two top right now. We just rotate in. Like you said, Ravage was up, and they popped it. And these are such squishy uh, supports right now. You look at their like levels in comparison to everybody else. They're both level three, so that's a lot of damage from Ravage. That like did all of their health essentially. They kill them. They pop the Death Prophet ult. They're not going to look to push this tier one, but they could easily do that if they wanted to. I think right now, and they're, they actually have Ledge here. So if they want to keep going, they can. But uh, Instead, they're going to go back to the well, heal up a little bit, and then maybe decide to come back in. I still think, like, the key for Explicit here is just, like, to hang on. I mean, I still think it's important to stress how powerful that track can be. Yeah, they don't have any kills yet, but if they're able to get even a couple with that track up, they're right back in this game. I think they have a lot more carry potential if this does go super late, but they will lose this tier 1 tower. The track is actually going to get the very last hit on that, using that Edict. Also sitting on a pair of arcane boots, so now they have actually three on their team so far, from what I can tell. Um, so looking to do really well and just able to roam around the map now, heading bottom. They would just want to take out all the tier ones. As they should. When you have an early advantage like this, and you have heroes like Death Prophet, like Lashrak, even Lone Druid, you know you should roll with your advantage, and they're going to keep going with it. The gold graph now three thousand in the favor of Gizmo. Experience only fifteen hundred, but still they're going to just keep taking out towers, like we said, and then hopefully with good warding and maybe counter warding, they're going to just have map control and not allow this Nature's Prophet or anyone else to really get jungle farm. And that's really going to put them farther back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is I mean, the the beautiful thing too. I think about picking up the Death Prophet, the ultimate on a hundred second cooldown, relatively short. I mean, they just used the middle, and now they're like, okay, we got the tower. Let's roll bottom, and what do you know? It's up again as soon as they need it. So they're just able to time their pushes with these cooldowns really well, so that they can continue their assault. 
the really interesting thing about this, and, I, and it's you know, it's not surprising the way that they've been you know landing this and the way they've got levels is that oh middle lane by the way. I'll just yeah, stop talking. This is Tide Hunter <laughs> getting tracked up. He's actually looking to fall. He wants a Ravage, but he's not going to find both of them in one spot. Still chasing this Chen. There is no Tier 1 mid. A Gush will come out in one second. Going to drop it now, but Morphling's actually... There's the Ravage hitting two heroes. The Strength Morph coming out, but is it enough? He's actually getting sent back to base by Chen, and he will just be fine. In the meantime, middle. Look at Tide Hunter go down to the Bounty Hunter. Nature's Prophet also catching the Shrek. Who is going to go down first is the question. The pin comes out. On the bounty hunter, he's taking a lot of damage. He's even dusted. He is gone. And that was a good setup kill. And Lashrak actually even survives. So it's just a one for one trade. Yeah, that was a crazy fight, crazy initiation. They really wanted to get that Morphling kill. That was a good send back by Chen. He was able to get away as well. Bounty hunter came in, took care of the Tide Hunter, was very low. Uh, but that's all they got, and I mean, they caught out with a great glimpse from Disruptor. They got the Bounty Hunter, they used the dust, and the Crypt Swarm was able to finish the job. So, uh, Furion uh, tried to kill Lestrak, and well, Disruption sold. Looking to survive, Lestrak actually now couldn't try again, but Shadow Demon using a very good Tango, and that is very well, might just save his life. You see Death Prophet still roaming around, Morphling is here to combat him, has actually an Ogre Club, by the way, so not messing around with these guys, looking for a really quick blacking bar, but now he's going to wait for him out. Glimpse is up, by the way, and he's not, he's going to use it with the connect field, a little strange positioning, but he's most certainly going to fall with that ultimate. Another great setup here. Gizmo looking really strong. Yeah, yeah I, they had to avoid dying with that Morphling. That's just, that's troublesome. The more you die as Morphling, the more further behind you are at this point, so... Yeah, I mean, they have one assist to share around their team. I mean, unfortunately, they just aren't getting gold from anywhere, and they, they can't even leave the farm. They have to try and defend this. Actually, here at the bottom, they're going to try and go in, but it looks like Bounty Hunter's going to get annihilated trying to get that Lashrak. Lashrak will actually get taken down. The Nature's Prophet Ultimate will bounce through and pick up that kill, but not worth it. And he was tracked, so a little bit of, uh, you know, extra assistical posse. But still, I mean, uh, yeah, not exactly worth it. And the Morphling dying, too, like I said, or like we said, uh, was uh, also just not to their advantage. He is the lead farmer, but so many towers, so much pressure being put on by Gizmo. Uh, and it's also Death Prophet getting a lot of this gold. He is going for that quick mech, as you can see, so they can really continue the pushes. A mech, actually, a mech is already done on Tidehunter, so they're going to have double mech? That's kind of bizarre. Well, I think, like I was saying earlier, it's all about keeping this push alive. They can't stop. This actually reminds me uh, of a game from the International, LGD versus Zenith, where one team was just like, it's, we have to sit back, we have to get our core items, we have to get our BKBs up, we can't engage right now. Oh. This the Blowing Druid top. Oh, sorry, but it looked like they were going to go on him. It's just a track. They're like, eh, forget it. Oh, then in the meantime, of course, Death Prophet picking up Chen in the middle. This poor Chen can't even get level 6 for his ult, just having a rough time in this game. Now they're going to push this mid tier too. Yeah, I think explicit, they just, they really have to try and get items together, and that's the only way they're going to win. Gizmo realized this, they have to press the advantage while they have it. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to trade towers right now, and I don't think this is the best option for them. There's, they can't defend this on it looks like, and they're just going to be able to push this without, you know, any trouble whatsoever. Also, look at um, look at what Lone Druid's going. He decided to pick up that Maelstrom, so that's pretty interesting. Pushing. They're going all pushing. They are oh, not yeah. holding this game back, you know, and look, they're already at the steps of Tier 3. Death Prophet popping the ult already. Level 1 or not, they are just doing as much pressure as possible, and they don't have protection. Remember, it was just used on the Tier 2. So they're no, they know that well in advance. Ravage is up as well. They have so many of their ultimates up, in fact, all of them, and they are looking to use that to their advantage. Now, Top is getting pushed by Morphling in the meantime, but... And they might actually have to fall back here because they realize it's maybe just too early for them to get into the tier three to take out that tower. I mean, I guess this is the the problem with pushing a tier three at the fifteen minute mark. Uh, you know, Death Prophet isn't even level eleven. Does have that max out witchcraft, so getting some extra exorcism goes out of that. But yeah, unfortunately, they just don't have the damage to be able to take that stuff down now. But you know, nine to two, their advantage now. Sitting uh, over 4,000, they, they gotta be feeling pretty good, but I mean, like we can tell in the item purchases, like we're saying, the Maelstrom picked up by Lone Druid, they are feeling a little bit of pressure and that they have to try and finish this game as quickly as possible. Oh, the glimpse on Nature's Prophet! Gonna get Thunderstrike as well as the Gush. He is taking way too much damage. A really good Sprout plus TP. Is the Ravage gonna get off? It doesn't even need it though. It looks like that is gonna be the death of Nature's Prophet.
And the rest of this Radiant team needs to just fall back. They're kind of looking to look, and actually the track is up on this track, so they're kind of interested in going in, but they don't have a ton of damage output at the moment. Remember, there are a lot of ganking heroes, so when this uh, Dire team is grouped up, it might not necessarily go that well for them. Oh, pings have already been coming out on the Roshan pit, and I'm actually surprised that they didn't uh, pick up the double damage rune by the looks of it. Lundru just got it. Oh, okay, Lundru did get it, sorry. Um, so yeah, gonna be looking to try and go in on this Roshan, try and pick it up really quickly. And this might be what they need to really be able to push in, just have that extra life, have that on the, the Death Prophet, I would imagine, just so that she can come right back up into the fight. She has actually constructed the Pipe of Insight, and there really isn't any damage coming out from the Radiant Squad that would be able to kill piped creeps. There aren't any wild axes to try and do a lot of damage through the compos composite damage. They really just have to try and auto attack them down and they don't have any auto attackers yet. Meanwhile, they trade the Roshan for the tier one in the bottom lane. I don't think that might have been a good trade because I don't think they could have defended that. There's a lot of uh, pushing there from the Furion with the uh, Shadow Deem up. They put an uh, aggressive ward down, which is a nice ward to have. But the Roshan does go down and it's probably going to go to the Lone Druid or the Lestrek, I guess. Uh, okay. Well, prove me wrong, I guess, but that's fine. Well, Lone Druid's been nowhere fine. close to death in any of these fights, you know. In fact, that's the only true. thing getting focused is his bear himself. He's fine. And he can just recreate that bear, so I think that's a smart choice. The Shrek has been the closest to death, probably, of everyone on their team. So I think a smart choice there. And now, yeah, with that uh, Aegis up, they might look to be even that much more aggressive. Game, get some of these other Tier 2 towers. You see a glimpse back on Bounty Hunter. He's going to try to get out, but remember, Shadowwalk is on cooldown. He's very fast, though, and he's looking with that drum popped just get out of there and he should be just fine so good glimpse but just not enough to catch him yeah unfortunately just close i mean you know it's not like uh gizmo have been like wasting their time or anything but this has opened up a lot of room i mean you look in now and uh morphling is actually leading the farm at the moment they have been able to pick up some tier one towers so they're starting to get some gold together like you said bounty hunter phase boots and drum so i imagine now he's going to start looking to go towards the BKB. Nature's Prophet has gotten a hand of Midas up, so he's going to be looking to try and continue his farm right now. So it looks like things are starting to come together finally for Explicit, and uh, you know, Morphling is getting closer and closer to his BKB. Yeah, if there's any team that could turn around this gold advantage, it's probably this team. You guys talked about having the Bounty Hunter that track gold is going to be pretty important. Meanwhile, there's going to be a gang that's going to try to go on the Lone Druid, but I don't know if that's going to work out for them. It, teleports. Oh, no, he cancels it. They know that it's too close to a tower and they can't take him down. Pings come out. They have an idea where he is. But he's they just have a gem. Out and he's oh, they do. They yeah, do I'm Disruptor. And that's a good, really solid pickup. First of all, against Bounty Hunter, of course, he does Shadow Walk and it's going to let you see him really quickly. But also, like I was saying, once you push that advantage, you know, you start counter warding and you really take control of the map. And I think that's going to be really vital for him to keep all this pressure. I mean, we look at late game, Morphling, Chen, Bounty Hunter, Nature Prophet. These guys are all really, really strong late game. But if they don't make it there, then there's, you know, that doesn't really do too much for this Radiant team. I'm actually really curious to see what the Nature's Prophet's going to wind up going for his first big item. He did wind up going for the, the Hand of Midas first. I wonder if he's going to look to go for a Sheepstick or maybe just for a, a damage item. Maybe go for the Daedalus. Maybe go for a Maelstrom to try and add some counter push to go against this Dire Onslaught. It, it'll be really interesting to see what he looks to do there. But meanwhile, the middle tower actually getting pushed. Uh, we do believe we do have all ultimates up for this Dire squad, so they're ready to go. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be tough to push in. I mean, they, they but the Morphling did actually take the tower on the top, and let's see if they can just take this min out. They want to force it. Chen in over his head. Going to use his ult, but going to get bursted down anyways. Really over pushed, and now tower's gone. Ghosts are still flying. This melee barracks doesn't have much of a prayer. Morphling, yeah, like you said, to take top. He's just staying there, but now TPing back to base. They're looking to defend this the best they can. The melee is actually not going down as quick as I expected it to. Uh, it's down now to 400 health. 300 health. Will they get the kill? It does look like it. Morphling just going in. Doesn't care. Gonna try. Blacking bar. Do as much damage as he can. Tidehunter will go down. The Ravage popped off, but not gonna do a whole lot, except ensure that the tier one is gone. Now, actually, a Tangle comes out Nature Prophet with a Thunderstrike. He's gonna get sent in by Chen, but the bear is gonna finish him off before he does. Morphling now actually falling back. Bounty Hunter chasing, chasing, but can he get the kill? No! The track will survive possibly. Oh, what an attack! But it's only an Aegis that gets popped and I'm in much Morphling now with Nature's Prophet going to finish off this disruptor. The end of streak there, but it looks like Morphling now in over his head might fall to this damage from Diabolic Edict as well. He's trying to kite them. A very good sprout. Is that going to be enough for this Morphling? 530 health. It should be. But Lone Druid is now trying to cut him off with the bear, and that is going to most certainly be the fall of this 
Oh, well, uh -huh. certainly. How is he still alive? He's gonna get out. Bounty Hunter gonna just put up a track, and they're just still keeping this chase down. I can't believe Morphling just survived that. I feel like the Dire team could have just, like, tipped their hat to Nature's Prophet and walked away. That was a gorgeous sprout. It was absolutely amazing. And just great play by that entire team to keep their Morphling alive. And there you go, look at that fight right there. The Ravage was dropped just on Morphling, but he was BKB'd through it. And that damage alone would have been enough to take his life there. So just showing you how important these key items are for this Radiant squad moving now into the 20 minute mark, starting to move into the middle game. This is where they're gonna be able to start picking up momentum. And this is their opportunity to get back in it. Yeah, I mean, that was a really interesting fight. I'm pretty sure the amount of buybacks that happened, actually it was only Nature's Profit and Bounty Hunter, but there were, you know, buybacks left, right, and center. I can't believe they didn't get the Morphling kill. That's, I mean, they needed that kill, honestly, to really, uh, you know, assert their dominance. They did get the, uh, they got the melee racks, which is a pretty big deal, and now they're actually looking to turn around and go into the uh, Radiant Team Woods here and, and find a kill. Yeah, they're searching. Or not. Well, or they're, they're thinking about searching. Not quite. Uh, remember, Disruptor did die, so he had the gem. It did go away. Um, it's on Leshrac. Oh, Leshrac has it now? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if he picked it up or not. All right, so they still have that gem. Still going to look to counter ward and track out that bounty hunter. A pin comes out. Nature's Prophet will get out. Morphling, in the meantime, going to just buy a TP, and there's nothing Death Prophet can do about it at this juncture. One second, though, the cooldown. He's really wanting to use it if this split earth randomly lands. Okay, no, I was going to say, that would have been amazing guessing, but did not happen. And now they're just back bottom. Going to pressure this tier 2 for sure, as they should. A mech and pipe up. Yeah, they really had the team fight advantage, and they need to keep going with it. I think it's crazy, too, when you look at how the, the top lane was going for Gizmo. I mean, just to show you how well they've been doing in this game, beating the Tidehunter, and now you look at Lashrak, and he almost has... Uh, his booster completed. He could disassemble his arcane boots. He could easily get the bloodstone and just about 500 gold. I mean, a support Lashrak is now being able to pick up uh, one of the more expensive items in the game to ensure that he can just keep popping off those Pulse Nova uh, damage. I mean, doing fantastic. Game. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the key. Having their supports get all of the farm, whereas the supports like Chen and Shadow Demon are a little bit behind in that regard. I mean, the only Shadow Demon only has arcane boots at this point, and I think Chen is like even further behind. Actually, he's got a headdress with regular boots, but still, I mean, that's the really the tale right now is that because of that top lane, the supports are pretty farmed in this scenario. Uh, Death Prophet will top they want to take this. Looks like. Spurs coming out. They're just doing some uh, little damage. Actually, a Sprout does come out on the Death Prophet. A good silence affecting these two heroes. TP coming in. Bounty Hunter going to get a track down on this Tide Hunter, but the tower already falls. They're working on this melee barracks already. 24 minutes, this will be their second melee barracks. That'd be really quick. Morphling trying to do some burst damage, but barely affecting anyone. Sprout comes out now on Lone Druid. He has that plate mail. He's very tanky. Morphling taking a ton of damage. Chen is going to all Blacking Bar popped, and now they're looking to do any kind of damage. Where's their damage? They don't have any yet at this point. It's too early. Tide Hunter just getting mecked up. They're going to take the melee. They're going for the range, and they very well might get it. Now the range is desperately trying to bend them back, but no, the range is down as well. That's a whole lane gone. Morphling is going to replicate barely to survive that. It's just profit now, getting a little caught out. Thunderstrike down. He's getting disrupted. Chen sending him home too. That's a very good combination to keep him alive. But that's a gone lane, and now they're rotating mid range. Lone Druid working on it, and they might get this as well. Yeah, there's nothing that really uh, explicit can do to stop this. I mean, they have no team fight. Really, they had to use their BKB now, so the Ravage is still available for Tidehunter. If they try to engage this, uh, Explicit's probably going to die. So they have to concede two lanes. Two lanes uh, of Vrax are gone at the 25 minute mark. Ismos is pressing their advantage. He's going to turn right in, he's going to Ravage right there. Morphling getting caught out, a great stack storm affecting him. Chen down already. Morphling just trying to survive, and he will most very well do so. But they've already picked off one hero. Purple actually behind them. Bounty Hunter, and he is seeing the glimpse, a great glimpse. Now can they follow it up is the question. They have the kinetic field, and it's going to work beautifully with the Thunderstrike. He is caught out here for sure, and he is most certainly got to escape. I hate calling it early, because sometimes they live like this. How much farther can he go? But this bear, bear is way too quick. Oh, the to go down to the Tide Hunter, actually. And now they're already in perfect position for this tier two. And 
Oh, this is just way too in favor of Gizmo. I, I'm really, really impressed by how well Gizmo is playing this. I mean, they've just had great map awareness this whole game, and now I'm even looking at Tidehunter's item. He goes ahead and picks up a Vanguard. I mean, that to me, it's like, okay, I know that these heroes are going to try and get their BKB, so I'll just make sure that I can survive long enough so that when it goes down, I can just ravage then. He's just making sure that he can be in these fights and always provide his support, and I think it's really interesting item pickup and a really smart one as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, him surviving is key in order to get the Ravage off. You saw what happened in that last team fight. I guess it was a long time. The, the BKB was popped by the Morphling down here in the bottom lane. And then, he, you know, after that, they moved into the middle lane. Tidehunter turned around. He's like, oh, yeah, your BKB is off cooldown, so I'm just going to Ravage right now. And he absolutely did that. They got the Chen kill. He couldn't get Morphling, but they were able to get the pick off on Bounty Hunter because they have the vision with that uh, Gym of True site. And at this point, it's going to take a lot for Gizmo to, you know, essentially throw this game is what it would be you know uh, for explicit comeback. Talk about stats. You know, they have two lanes pushed, right? Mm -hmm. Gold advantage is only 5,000 for Gizmo. Experience only 4,000. Seems... That's like barely anything when you consider yeah. how much an advantage they truly have. Roshan actually getting pinged. It is going to be up soon. And I think if they get that Aegis and use it well this fight, there really is no stopping them. They've had no, they haven't even engaged before the tower even goes down the other two lanes. So I'm not sure what they plan on doing for this last one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting uh, you point out the difference in the advantage. I think it really has to do with how Gizmo's been playing it, and now they're all pretty much split up, but really for a lot of this game, they've been trying to move around together um, and take advantage of the fact that they can push so well as, as a group, as a unit. The uh, Explicit team have been able to pick up a mech on the chance, so they're going to have some additional heal in the fight now. It looks like Shadow Demon is going to try and work towards a four staff, seeing another staff of wizardry. So, you know, they're starting to try and get some stuff together, but will it be too late? I mean, with two lanes of racks down, with the team that they've got with no team fight composition whatsoever, uh, I mean, Explicit's really far behind. It would take almost a miracle, I'd say, in order to get back in this game. This is probably actually has an Aghanim Scepter, so that's a little bit more uh, AoE team fight damage. But at this point, with another Aegis up on anybody in Gizmo, probably Sean's, I'd say, probably not the Lone Druid. Uh, they're, they're in the driver's seat right now, and with good reason. Well, this, the draft just went all in the favor of Gizmo. You know, they realized what Explicit was trying to do. They went these gank heavy heroes, a really bursty single target DPSers. But when you look at it, you know, they're like, okay, well, we're going to go this push lineup. And there's literally nothing they can do about it. You know, and it's just, it's. I'm, I'm really glad to see a team know when they have an advantage and to press it. You know, we speak about other teams, not necessarily, you know, they might just sit on their advantage and just farm up. But this team knows. They have the mech, they have the pipe, they have all the items they truly need to win this game. And I think they're going to look to rotate possibly the top and just try to end it soon. Yeah, I mean, if they get even one more kill or, you know, one more decent team fight, you know, on their side, they've, they've got what it takes to really just push that, you know, last lane of racks and that's going to be over. You really can't come back from make creeps. Yeah, it's, it'd be... Almost impossible, I'd say, at this point, with the advantage. It's only it's a small advantage, like you said, five thousand. It's probably more now after that Roshan, but yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Morphling uh, now actually getting really close to his mana styles. He's a couple hundred gold off that, so I'll give him some additional survivability. Like Gary said, the Aghanim's finished. Uh, looks like an, an ultimate orb on the Nature's Prophet, so I imagine a Scythe. He could also go with a Manta if you wanted to, uh, but I imagine he probably will go for the Scythe device. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a good. Good guess. That's a good bet. Yeah. yeah, Morphling actually almost got his Manta, yeah, but he's not quite there. And he did buy, so there's no buyback for him. He, he did buy that orb, and now that, you know, that's just another thing. He can be aggressive, but how aggressive can he truly be? But they're going to need to do something. Here they come. Bottom lane, tier 3. And actually the sweep around by Explicit. He's going in. Morphling just manning up. Uses that blink AP. Focus firing. Death Prophet. Ravage going to pop and only really hit Bounty Hunter, who's still alive. Now Morphling really focusing this Death Prophet hard. Tidehunter does pick off the Chen, but Death Prophet will go down, and he actually did not have the Aegis. Now we're going to have to see how this keeps going. Actually, Bounty Hunter did fall with Shadow Demon, and now Nature's Prophet getting caught out. That is going to be four down. Morphling, the only one to survive, trying to finish off. Does get it, replicates out, but it's a four for two trade. They could easily do with this Lone Druid plenty more damage to this tier three, and GG is called by Gizmo. No, it, it wasn't. It was called by Bounty Hunter first. Oh, was it? Good. Yeah, yes. I'm glad right to see that. Thank you. No BM there for you. Just, just the GG Here goes from Butter Fat, Manning up again. Manta style popped. Can he get out again? He's just trying to kite away from the tower, and he's doing a good job so far. Four staff even used on Tidehunter. A one-on-one -on -one fight, and I think actually Tidehunter's got that easily. Chen will send him home, though, and it should be just in time. 
Yes, it will. He's going to be safe. And Chen now in the meantime getting chased down by this lone druid. He's praying for it to take a root. And there it is. He's got it. Chen even using the ult on the Spirit Bear, but going to do no good. He's got that Mjolnir on the Spirit Bear. That's ridiculous how much damage he can burst out already. Morphling trying to damage. They just don't have any damage. Look at that. They're barely going to get the lone druid. It took forever to whittle him down with that plate mail. But in the meantime, Top getting pushed down. Lashrak using this, this Diabolic Edict. And Nature's Prophet coming from behind. They are not giving up, and I'm glad they're not, you know, still trying to get this going for them. Nature's Prophet disrupted to survive. Lashrak getting chased down with that track, but he's actually alive for now. One more thing we'll do with the Aegis is pop Morphly back in again. That's where he's been in and out of this fight like three times. Glimpse used, but Nature's Prophet survived. Chen doing a great job sending these heroes back, and now they're looking for Lashrak, trying to find him. He's actually juking pretty hard here. Good to survive for now. Trying to get one kill, but won't get it. The track will fall here with the track at the end. Chen does fall. Death Prophet, that ultimate. I think they forgot she was still in this game. And here she comes doing a lot of damage, chasing this bounty hunter. Can he escape? Wave, gonna miss. He's still alive and he's gonna survive, but to what to what avail? We just saw the explicit game plan right there. They, they go out in small numbers and they do that skirmishing, like I was saying at the beginning of the game. And... It's just a shame that that's the only time that they've had the ability to do that this game. Doing just fine in small numbers, even though they're behind by like 8,000 gold, maybe even a little bit more by now. And they're able to do okay, but unfortunately it's just too little too late. This third lane is going to be taken out. And uh, of course the GGs have already gone out, but this is certainly going to seal the deal and spawn the Mega Creeps. Looks like initiation on Sean's actually gonna get tracked up, gonna go down. Shadow Demon will get that kill. Chen also gonna fall though. In the meantime, this Lone Druid, a Ravage pops, hits four heroes. Couldn't have position that much better. And now Bounty Hunter's trying to get some tracks and picks up, but Nation's Prophet gonna barely TP out. It looks like actually TP's right next to Tide Hunter. Just anchors matches and finishes him off. Shadow Demon now gonna go down to that Connect Field plus ultimate combination. And that's four down. Gizmo has escaped in the bag, and GG to them, sending Explicit to the loser's bracket for this qualifier. I mean, what can you say? I just, the, I think I liked the game plan from Explicit. I like what they were trying to do, but honestly, I think the, the, the team fight from Gizmo was just too much. They had the Ravage, they had the Disruptor, they had the, you know, they had all the team fight, whereas Explicit had none. I mean, they, there was really no, there was nothing for them to look forward to, so good games for okay, both of them, though. BDLM? Uh, no, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Of course, we are following the Rising Star Qualifiers leading into the GEST. I am BDLM with my buddy J4Y from Dota On Demand, and of course, our buddy Mott joining us as well. Please continue to follow these games, continue to follow our stream. We will see you next time. And one last shout out, because I didn't tell you, mm. to uh, Watch Gods now, because he is coming up also, Shiver. You can go to DotaTalk.com. Go to the events. You can see all the streams on one page. Follow the ones you want to watch. But, yeah, this is going to be going on for the next few hours. So, yeah, keep watching. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.